long wait in Northwest Arkansas for the return. The real full stadium of barbecue smoke haze in a daze, singing shared cheers of alma mater praise. The return of college football. 2020 was a year we'll all remember, but we'd love to forget. And now it's time for new memories to be forged in the College Football Collective. Hope springs eternal for Razor Mackton Owls on the first Saturday of September. It's Labor Day weekend. Summer's over, but a new season begins. Identities forged on practice fields under an unforgiving sun now are revealed in front of the masses. Who can forgive and forget, but they like a win more than anything else. Everybody has the same chance. Zero and zero, and the ball's placed on the tee, and after that, it's an exposition of skill for all the world to see. It's the Rice Owls from Conference USA to open the 2021 season against the Arkansas Razorbacks out of the SEC with football back in Fayetteville, Arkansas with a full stadium expected here this afternoon for the season opener. And with that, we're so glad to welcome you to our broadcast. My cousins, Dustin Pax and Tara Talmadge reporting from field level. Dustin, expectations are high for both teams whose years didn't go the way they wanted in 2020, but things look bright for this year. They do, and there was some momentum gained at the end of last season for both teams. What we're going to see today is two contrasting styles. Rice wants to run the ball. They want to run the clock down as much as they possibly can. And with Arkansas, with this Kendall Bryles offense, they want to run up-tempo. And we're going to see how well those teams can do that with new quarterbacks for both teams. Yeah. And it's going to be two guys to start for Rice. Yeah, we're going to see Wiley Green probably get the start. It'll be his 11th of his career. He's been around the block a few times. And then Luke McCaffrey, that, that name may sound familiar, of course. He transferred from Nebraska, the McCaffrey family. He may be the fastest player on the Rice football team. And this year in year number two for Sam Pittman and his offensive coordinator, Kendall Bryles, they say so long to Felipe Franks and put K.J. Jefferson in the driver's seat. And Jefferson's a little bit more athletic than Franks. He's got a quicker first step. He did have the one start last season against uh, Missouri. It wasn't a bad start, but look at the athletic ability to get outside the pocket. He can make plays with his legs and his arm. And uh, everyone's kind of excited for the new regime here at Arkansas. And Tara, really the best news of the day for Arkansas fans is they look to be at full strength on offense. Absolutely, guys. I know this Razorback fan base is excited about this one. Traylon Burks, one of the best wide receivers in the entire SEC, is full go for this game against Rice. Now, there was some concern in the days leading up to this matchup that he wouldn't be able to play because he has been nursing a lower leg injury. We've even heard he's been in a boot on and off before this game. So, exciting news for the Razorbacks to see him out there today he is a difference maker for this Arkansas off offense. Sam Pittman certainly optimistic the 59 year old second year head coach three and seven in year number one taking over for Chad Morris who won four games in two years Pittman after just a year had his contract restructured that's how high they are on him in Fayetteville hoping to lead them back to better seasons ahead and what is college football's most difficult conference to win. And around college football today already the noon slate looking good to start. And here's what we're looking at in the SEC, Dustin. Of course, Georgia and Florida atop their respective yeah. divisions. But if we've learned anything here through a couple days of college football, it's that the way things start aren't always how they finish. Well, and you look back to 2020, it was such a bizarre season with that, with all the COVID issues. Teams are coming into this year. Some are better prepared, some are not as prepared. And obviously Georgia has a terrific matchup tonight with Clemson. That'll be tonight on ABC. KJ Jefferson, the red shirt sophomore quarterback from Missouri. Depending on who you ask and what day throughout training camp, well, he is 6'3", but 245, 235, somewhere between there. They like him at 235 for his ideal playing weight. He'll be making just the third start of his career and the first at home, only his ninth college game. So Rice ready to kick, and Ladarius Bishop heels on the, to on the line he is ready to return for Arkansas.
former Southwest Conference rivals playing for the first time in 30 years. Their last matchup all the way back in 1991. The Rice Owls and the Arkansas Razorbacks to get their season underway. And from a couple yards deep in the end zone, the return eclipses is the 20 and then the 25. Ball comes loose. Out at about the 28-yard line, Arkansas maintains a couple of hearts skip a beat on that opening kickoff return as the offense gets ready to take the field. Yeah, that's a lucky break for the Razorbacks. That ball definitely was out and nearly recovered by a right out defender. Take a look. As he makes the spin cut, a little loosey-goosey with the football. Got to protect that ball. Luckily, Arkansas falls on the, the football, and now we'll get a chance to see K.J. Jefferson at quarterback. From the gun to open up the afternoon. Had a huge outing and a start against Missouri last year. And what does he have here today? Plenty of time on the roll. He gets clobbered as he looks to throw. And he's taken down on the opening snap. Antonio Montero. Boy, Montero has some terrific pressure on this play. This Mike linebacker, number one, is going to come into your screen. It's a blitz. And he's going to chase down Jefferson from behind. There's nowhere to go. Great coverage in the back end, too, by Rice. And off on second down. Traylon Smith navigates the right side of the line. The Richard Jr. from Houston makes it third down. Quickly right back to the line on third and four. The blitz comes and the throw is a little bit too high. Looking to across the middle for Traylon Burks. And now fourth down and four for Arkansas. That was an easy throw. It should have been a pitch and catch to Burks on the outside. But of course, maybe the nerves bothering Jefferson to start the game. It was a third and four. He, he throws that slant about five yards over the head of Burks. That should have been an easy first down. So Reed Bauer is on to punt. Starter last year, averaged about 44 yards of boot. And sends it into a toasty afternoon sky in Fayetteville. About 90 degrees, a little bit north of 50% humidity. And on this first drive, the first two, we expect to see Wiley Green, the redshirt sophomore from Coppell, Texas. He's the most experienced quarterback on the roster. And so he's going to get the start. He's been around for a, for a while. Ten career starts. And at some point, we will see Luke McCaffrey. The way Coach kind of presented it to us this week, Mike, was that it sounds like Wiley Green's going to get the first two series. Then they'll bring in McCaffrey for the third and fourth series, and they'll see how it goes after that. Green hands it off on first down. And as Kalen Griffin nuzzles his way into the defensive line, finds a good chunk of yardage on first down, with Green starting at quarterback today, it makes it the seventh consecutive season with a new starting quarterback in the opener for Rice. You have to go back to the 2014 and 2015 seasons to find consecutive years with the same starting quarterback for Rice. Green with a comfortable pocket around him, makes the pass. There's some extra yardage to be had all the way out to near midfield. A nice strike from Wiley Green to get Rice off and running. It's a nice throw here by Green to the outside. Their man coverage across the board, and they, they play most of the man free. And if you make a man miss in man coverage, you're going to be off to the, to the races, and he was right there. Very good pickup there on second down. Bradley Rosner, the junior who opted out of the 2020 season in which Rice only played five games, makes the catch as Rice picks up 20. Pitch straight back. A lot of lateral running there for Griffin, the freshman from Tyler, Texas, who was their leading rusher last year. Jalen Catalan, the team captain and safety, brings him to the turf. Well, Catalan, we, we talked with the, uh, the staff at, at Arkansas, and they just rave about this kid. I mean, he is just a... a, a 
ball of energy from his free safety position. Just gets inside the box as much as he possibly can. He's a ball hawk, as you saw right there on first down. He was an instantaneous impact player, leading FBS freshman with 99 tackles last year. Arkansas ready for the run again on second and ten. And it'll set up a third down and long passing opportunity for Rice here on their opening drive. Good job there by Fouché, number seven, getting in there. Knifes down from his nickel spot. He's a team captain, a leader. Veteran player from New Orleans. A big third down coming up here for Wiley Green. Looks like Arkansas is going to play a little zone coverage. Now they're going to switch to man. The Hogs rush for the throw is quick and off target. Intended for Rosner. That was exactly where Green was looking right from the get-go. Yep. And so both teams sputter on their first drives. That was that was a nice disguise by the Arkansas defense. They come up, they, they show zone coverage, then they show like they're gonna play man coverage, and then they backed off at the last second. And I, I don't think maybe Green was a little bit confused with what the secondary was playing. Charlie Mendez punting for Rice. His kick carries, and a little bit too far, despite some nice backspin on it. It would have been nice to put that shot on the green would have set him up for a one putt, but instead it's a touchback, and it's Arkansas on offense on the other side. Our week one SEC football lineup continues all day and night, capped off by ETSU and Vandy. Every game also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere, one app, one tap. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, Tara Talmadge, the opener for Rice and Arkansas on a toasty day in Fayetteville. Arkansas three and out on its first drive. Rice got to about near midfield, also had to punt. And that went into the end zone, so it's Arkansas here on its second drive. Starting from their own 20-yard line, Traylon Smith with a nice burst, and he gets all the way out to the 40-yard line, picks up about 20 on the run for the redshirt junior. And look at the tempo, they're getting up to the ball very fast. Want to try and catch Rice off guard. Exactly the speed that Kendall Bryles wants to play at. Great yeah. pursuit on the outside there from the Rice defense to limit the opportunity. Myron Morrison, the linebacker, helping contain. Ten and a half to go first quarter. A trip through the middle yields little on the run. And a third down and long on the way for the Hogs. This is a very veteran offensive line for the Hogs, Mike. They bring back all five starters from a season ago. And, uh, you know, Coach obviously is, is an offensive line coach by trade. He loves working with those guys. They are very physical. And that center right there, Ricky Stromberg, that dude, they say he's nasty. Coaches around the league voted him preseason first team all SEC. And Sam Pittman wants everybody to follow his lead and what he does off the field and more importantly on the field. Blitz comes. Jefferson eludes it. He's got a scramble now. Defense converges a stretch toward midfield. The Arkansas sideline wants the first down and they've got it. Playmaking from KJ Jefferson. Trayshawn Chamberlain's going to come off the left side of your screen. Number 17, he's got to make that play. That should be a sack and a loss of about eight yards, but really terrific job by Jefferson to get away. That's something that Franks didn't have. That ability to break a tackle, put the one foot in the ground, and, and make that cut and go. They love Jefferson's athletic ability. What he'll have to live up to, though, is the pass completing ability of Felipe Franks, who completed almost 70% of his passes through 17 touchdowns and just four interceptions in the 2020 season. 
Off to the left side, plenty of space and a lowered shoulder for Rocket Sanders, the freshman from Florida out of the backfield, moved to running back during spring practice after signing as a wide receiver. And the ceiling is really high for the youngster from Florida. A couple of big pickups for Arkansas and a contested ball. The 27 yard line falls to the turf. Jefferson took a big time hit here at the end of this play. Watch as he rolls off to, to his left here and gets smacked. Big time shot there from Trey Schumann, the defensive end. 6'2", 290 right into his wheelhouse. There's room up the middle. Jefferson takes off. He's to the 20, to the 10. Open field. Touchdown, K.J. Jefferson. And just like that, Arkansas is on the board. 6-0. Opportunity, a near sack for Rice, and just a few plays later, it turns into an Arkansas touchdown. Well, if you're an Arkansas Razorback fan and you were worried at all about the quarterback position, I think you're in good hands with KJ Jefferson. 34 yards to the house, 7 0 Hogs. Like, I'm not so sure this wasn't a quarterback draw for the touchdown, but the way Stromberg clears out the center of the, the screen, big time block, and then Jefferson just takes off. He sees green grass and opportunity, why not? 35 yards to the house, and just outruns everybody on that Rice defense. A terrific start for the Razorbacks. With more on Jefferson, let's go down to the, to the field. Here's Tara. And that's exactly what this Arkansas staff wanted to see from K.J. Jefferson. It's also exactly what offensive coordinator Kendall Riles was talking about with Jefferson. He loves a dual threat quarterback and Jefferson showing off his legs there. Head coach Sam Pittman said that Jefferson has come a long way through fall camp and he's seen the field really well. And man, when he finds that pocket, he hits it and he takes off. Tara, does he look different to you this year than he did a season ago? Yeah, the confidence out there is definitely different. I think he has that weight on his shoulders that this is his team, this is his offense, and he is controlling it. Good stuff. A good start after a little bit of a stumble out of the gates on their opening drive. 8-23 first quarter. Rice, a team last year that played in just five games and went 2-3 and three with wins over... Southern Miss and Marshall, and we're going to see it. The Marshall win, Mike, was big. That was, at the time, Marshall was ranked 15th in the country undefeated. Well, we're going to see uh, some running from quarterbacks today on both sides. Wiley Green, not as much. Here is he goes for his second drive of the day, and Green on the rollout, dumps it short. That's Jager Bull, the tight end, just shy of the 30-yard line. The quarterback, part of Mike Bloomgren's first recruiting class, and a flag at the end of that play. Referee today is Lee Hedrick. Personal foul on the defense. Look like he said number 31. That's Grant Morgan, the captain and linebacker for Arkansas. Well, that would be a, a devastating blow if this is confirmed because he is the quarterback of the defense. I mean, he is is their, really one of their top defenders, and he calls out every call. Let's take a look back and, and see where it happens. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's such a tough call, Mike. I mean, does the helmet lower? Does he hit it with the crown of his helmet to the head or neck area? Is there a forceful thrust? I don't think so. I, I think that's that. This should be a no call, Mike. What about you? Well, 
So you've got the hit on the quarterback, and when he's released the pass, that makes him a defenseless player. And if you right. make forcible contact to the head or neck area, that's the way the rule is written. And he also, you have the argument there that there's the potential that it was a hit with the crown of the helmet. And I, I agree with you that th the way this rule is written, it, it's almost impossible as a defender to say, okay, well, he, two seconds ago he wasn't defenseless, but now he is, and now I've got to change what I do. I'm sure you would agree with that, that you can't just yeah. make that this, this decision in the blink of an eye. There's the rules, of course, for targeting. Mike, I think from the second look, it was targeting. It, it, he did lower the, the crown of his helmet. There, he's so that's out. really bad news there for Arkansas that Grant that's Morgan really terrible. is out for the remainder of this game here, not even to the midway point of the first quarter as they lose one of their best defenders. And assuredly, Sam Pittman is not pleased with that. Yeah, he, he understands how big of a loss that is for his team. And he has some choice words for the official. I, I think from that high end zone look, we could tell. What's the, yeah, the crown goes down and he goes right helmet to helmet. So that's the right call. You hate to see a player get ejected in the first quarter of a game who's a, a terrific standout like Morgan is, but, but that's the right call. He was the SEC's leading tackler a year ago, former walk-on and now captain is done for the day. Luke McCaffrey comes in here at quarterback for Rice. And we've got a whistle again. We may have to be penalty goes against today, Mike. Jager Bull, the tight end. Yes, it was. He said 82 on the offense. That's the tight end Bull who made the catch on the play where the targeting happened. So Luke McCaffrey transfer from Nebraska who spent just his spring at Louisville played seven games last year for the Huskers made a couple of starts and he's much more of a runner Dustin than he than Wiley Green is yeah, he, he may be the fastest player on the field I mean he's got that McCaffrey speed and there's no doubt from a quarterback position what that dynamic ability can bring to the table defense plays close to the line of scrimmage the handoff to Jordan Myers he is swallowed up They'll play him everywhere. Bumper Pool comes in on the tackle. Another sturdy piece of this defense at linebacker. Defense flying to the football. Love to see that. You know, the one thing that uh, Rice does, Mike, that most teams don't do, they huddle. <laughs> and they slow things down as you take a look at the defense of, of Arkansas. But they, they take their time. I mean, they're going to run as much clock as they possibly can. And, Try to slow this game down. Now Green back at quarterback. As he buys some time, throws off his back foot, complete to August Pete, who had just one catch in their opener last year, got hurt and missed the rest of the season. Third down coming up. So Dustin, they can take a lot of time off the play clock, but they've got to yeah. be able to convert first downs to make those possessions meaningful, and therefore limiting the time that Arkansas has the ball. Yeah, because Ar Ar the same thing for Arkansas. I mean, they want to go fast, but if they go three and out, they're giving the football back to Rice, who wants to go slow. It's a, a complete contrast of styles. Arkansas drops seven on third down and nine. The pocket holds, the short pass is not enough. Myers makes the catch out of the backfield, but Joe Fouché made sure that he didn't go any further. Watch Poole, Bumper Poole. What a great name for a linebacker. Just reads this out of the, the backfield to the flat. And takes Myers to the ground for a big stop on third down. Arkansas up 7-0 over Rice. The Owls forced to punt on the return. It was a penalty against the Razorbacks and a legal block in the back. So it wasn't great field position to start, but it gets a little bit worse here as they'll have first and 10 from their own eight and a quarter yard line. A quarter, a third, Dustin, how are you measuring that? <laughs> Well, K.J. Jefferson had the score, the only one of the game. What appeared to be a design touchdown run in just the third start of his Arkansas career. 
Inside of five and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Either team has been able to find a huge amount of running room. Traylon Smith gets a couple there on first down. Second eight on the roll. That was dangerous in and out of the hands of Traylon Burks. And if that was grabbed, that would have been going for six the other way. And, and Burks taps his chest and that's my bad because he knows when that ball pops up in the air, it's a little fake read option just to try to leak out Burks to the backside. And of course, if that thing pops up a little bit higher, Smith may have had himself a touchdown. That was a very dangerous play for the Razorbacks. Unsure hands there for the preseason first team all SEC wide receiver. Long throw, and it's too tall. Targeting Burks again. Now fourth down. So on one play, it's off of Burks' hands. This time too tall out of Jefferson's hands. And they're going to be punting from their own end zone. Good job by the Rice Owls to bow up there and take advantage of the great field position that your punter gave you. And of course, the added uh, penalty on top of it. Now Rice has a chance for for themselves to have excellent field position as well. Reed Bauer from the end zone with the freshman Sean Fresh ready to return. He's got some space from the 45 yard line turning the corner and all the way up to the 40. So they're knocking on the doorstep already a field goal possession here with the Owls looking for their first score of the day. Meeting up against Arkansas for the first time since 1991. Last drive on consecutive snaps we saw quarterback changes. Luke well, McCaffrey the starts this drive. Or the third series I should say. And yeah, he's going to get this drive and probably the next drive to see if they can find a hot hand. Return, first down. Well, the good news is we heard something from the official. We just didn't hear what the call was. <laughs> yes, it appears Lee Hendricks' microphone has returned a referee today. We're informed that the microphone was out for everybody. So back a little bit. And first and 10 at the 35-yard line for Luke McCaffrey and Rice. McCaffrey rolls out. Pressure comes. He zings it downfield. It's tipped and nearly intercepted. So back-to-back -back possessions, Arkansas and Rice, with wide receivers just missing them, and the defense not able to capitalize. Yeah, Fouché thought he had himself a pick six there. <laughs> Football just didn't quite bounce his way. But that was a pretty good throw. I love that McCaffrey got on the move. Shows a little bit of arm strength. Just got a drop from the wideout. Luke McCaffrey, the son of Ed, the former NFL wide receiver, now the head coach at Northern Colorado. Turns to the perimeter and grabs a couple of yards. Third and eight for Rice on the way. Conference opponents way back when. The last time they met, you wonder, Dustin, if whoever put this score sheet into the archives yes. would realize that when they spilled their Folgers on it, that 13 <laughs> years later, somebody would be looking at it, and that's how they'd make history. Love it. The last Rice win over Arkansas all the way back in 1990. A 19-11 victory in Little Rock. Third and eight, turn around right at the sticks. And that's a Rice first down, the completion to Rosner. That's a really good job by, by McCaffrey, putting that on Rosner on the outside, runs right to the sticks, breaks it down. That football's got to be out before Rosner's out of his break. And it was. Beautiful throw and catch for the first down for Rice. Shows a little zip on that, uh, that pass there for McCaffrey. Rosner, the former junior college wideout in his sixth season now of college football.
Jeffrey with the handoff. That's going to be difficult going up against that front seven of Arkansas. Returning their top six tacklers from a year ago. You know, McCaffrey has been here for two months, and Wiley Green's been here for years. The funny thing about, you know, when we talked with Coach uh, Bloomgren uh, the other day, he said that really in two months, McCaffrey has picked up everything. He almost feels like he's been here for years, but very impressive that he's been able to pick up so much in just two months, Mike. It's a lot to learn. Mike Bloomgren said, trying to learn this offense is like learning a really difficult foreign language, like trying to pick up Mandarin as a native English speaker. So that's right. That gives you an idea of, of just what kind of terminology there is to learn. And that certainly the academic expectations are high at Rice. And, and uh, they are on the football team as well in terms of what you've got to be able to pick up to jump in and earn the respect of your teammates. Now, and you're number four for Mike Bloomgren, seven and 23 at Rice with his best year, three and nine in the 2019 campaign. It's about two and three last year. Empty set, watch for McCaffrey to, to just take off and run this. Well, it worked for Arkansas, but the pressure is too much. He throws to the end zone, incomplete, wide for Cedric Patterson. And they'll have to settle for the field goal after McCaffrey took a big shot there, Dustin. It's Andrew Parker, 28, at the end of this play. Yeah, it's 28, comes in there and just buries McCaffrey like a pile driver at the end of this play. Look at this. This helmet flies off. My goodness. You better strap that up, McCaffrey. <laughs> the Razorbacks are flying around that. By the way, Parker's in the game because Grant Morgan's out. That's the backup Mike Backer, so... They've got some depth here on this Arkansas defense. Field goal try, sails wide, no good. Colin Riccatelli sends it wide right. And after great starting field position, they had a chance for a chip shot. And it's still a zero on the board for the Owls. Yeah, and, and points matter in a game like this. It's, it's, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, Mike. Every field goal is going to matter for this Rice uh, offense. To be able to try and stay in it against an SEC opponent where Arkansas comes into the game in their first contest since October 17th of last year against Ole Miss. Where they're favored to win. They were the underdog in the final six games of the 2020 season. They went one and five in those games with a win against Tennessee. Final moments here of the opening quarter. The lone score, a touchdown run from KJ Jefferson. There is a flag there as Traylon Smith gets dragged out of bounds at the end of the run. You think they're going to call a late hit here, Mike? I mean, he's dragging him out of bounds from inbounds. It might have been more so the manner in which he was tackled. Yeah, we'll see. Holding on the offense number 18, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Who will replay first down? Just when you think you've got it figured out, where with the way that flag was thrown and the timing with which it happened, it certainly didn't appear like it was going to be holding, but that's the call. Yeah. That backs up the Razorbacks to the 11. They said number 18, but there's no number 18 on offense. It's a backup quarterback. Perhaps they were looking at Devion Warren, number 10, who makes the catch. Yeah. And he slips one tackle as he gets out to the 15-yard line. And again, they're going to hurry to the line of scrimmage, try to get the call in. It's a toss. Smith reverses field, changes course again. A spin across the 20. Dustin, when the offense is going this fast, what are all the things that need to go right leading up to the snap? But first, you got to get the call, and then you got to get lined up, and then you got to read your keys. Sometimes the call comes in late, and the players are scrambling, they're looking around. That's why you, you, you kind of catch uh, the defense off guard at times. 
And of course, you, you want to run as fast as you possibly can in this Kendall Bryles offense. Remember Kendall Bryles, Bryles was at Baylor with all those prolific offenses way back in the day. As it's set up for a third down and nine for Kendall Bryles and this offense. So Miles Adams is going to come in for Schumann at that right defensive end. Pressure comes, throw across the middle, and an immediate wrap-up tackle. Nicely done from Treshawn Chamberlain, who is the one who missed on the sack opportunity on the scoring drive from Arkansas, and his vigilance helps get the Razorbacks off the field. It's a good job on the third down when you're going to ask your defense to play some man coverage. And, and of course, uh, Trey Sean, he lines up everywhere in this defense. Linebacker, safety, hybrid, I mean, he does it all. He's got some really strong athletic ability and, and, and coverage ability, too. You saw it right there. Fifteen minutes gone in the season opener for Rice and Arkansas. The biggest play of the opening quarter, a K.J. Jefferson touchdown run, and that's the difference. The Owls, the Razorbacks, steady. Arkansas with a 7-0 lead on Rice after one quarter at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. And a drive that did not go all too far for the Razorbacks as they get set to punt it away to start the second quarter. And it's blocked! It's loose at the 20, and Rice recovers! The Owls with another short field. Special teams a difference maker in the first half. Well, Coach Bloomgren talked about it. All three phases have to play well. And just a poor protection up front by the Razorbacks. That's a great way to, to block a punt, too. You got to come in with your hands. A lot of times guys will jump or dive. No, 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 take it off the foot of the punter. It's a perfect job right there. Was that Orgy who had it? Had the block? It was play wide. Okay. It was wide, excuse me. Who falls on top of it. The quarterback rotation lands on Wiley Green. You can't say for this drive, but we certainly can say at least for this snap as they've rotated mid-drive already in this game. And they run it on first down. Kalen Griffin, about four yards there, the freshman from Tyler, Texas, who they say when he gets up after some big hits, he'll be smiling, Dustin, because he loves and welcomes the contact. He's, he loves the contact, and, and he runs people over. He's physical for a freshman, 5'10", 215. It's a big kid. They love him here at Rice. The Owls have had a chance to get on the board already once today. A missed field goal from 36 yards has kept it a 7-0 game. They want to pound the rock, run the clock, and they get themselves a first down. You got to add the third part, Mike. Pound the rock, run the clock, and play great defense. That's what they're doing so far in this ball game. And, and they again, were out they by Arkansas to nearly a two to one margin in the first 15 minutes. But they are right up against it here on a first down. Looking to finish things off in the end zone. Pressure comes, it's slipped by Green, he takes off, and a backpack tackle by Andrew Parker stops him at the nine as he gains about a yard. Uh, I don't know how Green somehow slips out of this sack, because this he was dead to rights right there in the backfield by uh, Gerald. And Parker does a good job chasing him down from the backside, but that was a really Big play by Green, saved himself about eight yards. Now they're, now they're going to put Green outside and, and bring in the Wildcat with uh, Kalen Griffin. But a flag comes down before that snap.
illegal substitution. We are uh, going on amateur lip reading day here with the referee Lee Hedrick's microphone having cut out for everybody. So as Rice tries to get a little tricky, it backfires on them and backs them up to the Arkansas 14 yard line. Any shots downfield have been few and far between so far in the early going both sides. Green from the pocket steps up, delivers across the middle, and it's incomplete at the goal line. Eyes on Cedric Patterson. Well, Green is, is taking some shots today by this Razorback defense. Takes another one right there on second down. Now, a big third down coming up here. You, know, you talk about taking shots. Jake Bailey, their, their top receiver, hasn't had a target yet in this game. It's green to the sideline, Luke McCaffrey on third down at quarterback. It's got to be so tough rotating these quarterbacks in. He wants the snap, play clock is winding down. It's at one as he takes it and hands it off to Jordan Myers, who knifes his way down to about the seven yard line. A Mike, missed field goal already today from 36, and it's fourth down distance. Mike, are you surprised that they basically are settling for a field goal? I mean, running the football there on third and 14 is, is basically, you know, kind of giving up a little bit on the drive and say we're, we'll be happy just to have three. That surprised me a little bit. Well, it also comes with the built-in assumption that your line is going to be better than an SEC defensive line. Here's Rick Atelli for his second field goal try. And after a miss on the first, he's true here and makes it a 7-3 ball game. Well, they're happy to get points on the board after a special team's victory for Rice at 7-3. It's the SEC on ESPN, Arkansas and Rice. Head-to-head -head second quarter, Rice getting on the board. 11.55 to go before the half at Razorback Stadium. 25-yard field goal for Colin Riccatelli after his miss earlier from 36. And the return from the seven-yard line for Ladarius Bishop. Out to the 22, Tara. Yeah, guys, losing Grant Morgan earlier was a huge blow for that Arkansas linebackers group because also you have guys like Hayden Henry who is still unable to play right now because of a targeting call that he got last season against Alabama. Plus, Grant Morgan is just a leader out there on that defense in general because Sam Pittman said that he's like the quarterback of that defensive side of the ball. No doubt a big loss in... Obviously, big shoes to fill for Andrew Parker. This drive starts with a throw down the sideline. And that pass is caught. There is a hat down, which may indicate that there was a foot out of bounds on that play from Devion Warren. I think he ran out of bounds and came back came in. back in, and you can't yeah. be the first player to touch, touch the ball. Yeah when you've reestablished yourself in bounds if you were not forced out of bounds by your opponent. It's a heck of a throw by Jefferson. So it's illegal touching on the offense, of course, number 10. Warren. He does a great Dustin, job coming, coming double coming pay back today for, yeah. for playing official and an, an analyst. <laughs> <laughs> so watch right here. He's going to go out of bounds and comes back in. I don't even think it was a catch because he, he was out of bounds when he caught the football. But nonetheless, they call it legal touching on the offense. They'll bring it back. The difference there could have been if it were a legal catch had he been forced out of bounds by the cornerback. Yes. But because that wasn't the case and he came back in, he can't be the first player to touch the ball. So it knocks him back five yards. And Arkansas goes to the air again. 
Rice has work to do to clean up some open field tackling opportunities. Traylon Burks with the grab for the Razorbacks. Receiver and just kind of stuck my forearm out his thigh board and it just it just snapped. And of course, uh, I ended up breaking it again my rookie year with Minnesota. It's a physical, physical game, Mike. Indeed it is. Second and three, a physical run from Traylon Smith. The run earlier in the game for K.J. Jefferson, his 34-yard touchdown to get Arkansas on the board. The longest run by an Arkansas quarterback since November of 2004. Matt Jones went for 72 yards against Ole Miss. Tunnel vision over toward his left side. It's Tyson Morris, the senior wide receiver, who's getting his first career start today. Good space, soft tackle to the right side. Giving some open room for Smith. That's a really good job by the offensive line getting this push on this stretch play. The zone blocking scheme, outside zone, look at this. They, they push, 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 and a great block there by 87 Blake Kern at the end of the run. All sorts of time, pressure finally gets there. The Owls converge the throw to the sideline. Might be picked off, Mike. Yes, yeah, Sean Fresh got in front of it, the freshman from Austin, Texas. And he steps in front of the throw from K.J. Jefferson. The Owls on special team strike, and now on defense, do it again. Fresh is just going to step right in front of this ball. Jefferson, I don't think, sees him or thinks he's going to... That's a great get the feet and bounds by Fresh, the first-year starter. We, we talked with the, the staff at Rice. They said, you know, Fresh is a little bit untested, but they love his ability. It makes a great play for the Owls. He, only he got hurt in game. the opener. Yeah, yeah, he, he got, got hurt in the opener, Dustin. So it's been a very long wait for Sean Fresh to get back into the action. Yeah. Jim Pittman said he didn't expect Jefferson to have a lot of nerves today, but it's easier said than done when the defense is bearing down on you. And Rice will try and take advantage of good field position again. They have been granted some gifts in the first half, and they've got the opportunity to take the lead. Yeah, two turnovers. I mean, you, well, you block punt, and now you get an interception. Sets you up with great field position. I'm just curious to see how, how Rice is going to play this out the rest of the game with their quarterbacks, because rotating in McCaffrey and you know, Wiley Green, not one of those guys is going to be able to get some consistency, which I think is would, would be difficult if I was playing quarterback. You, you want to be out there with your guys. They run it on second and ten. It'll be third and about five for Rice. And I'm, I'm in agreement with you, Dustin, to rotate back and forth between Green and McCaffrey. After the third drive, Mike Bloomgren said there wasn't necessarily a plan other than to play the hot hand, but to right. switch back and forth doesn't necessarily seem like it would lend to consistency, especially like they're doing right now, mid-drive. Uh, on, a, on a crucial third down, you're going to bring McCaffrey off the bench. Now, I know, obviously, he brings that athletic ability to this offense, but they, they throw green on the sidelines, and we could bring him in the next play if you get the first down. It's just it's a back and forth. McCaffrey quickly hands it off, and that goes nowhere in a hurry. Catalan makes a great play on this jet sweep. Watch number one. He reads it, comes inside the block, which he probably shouldn't do, but he is so athletic that he makes the play for the loss. Great job by Jalen Catalan right there. Well, they gave it to Cameron Montgomery, who is small but mighty, 5'5", 160, perhaps trying to have him disappear behind that offensive line. And as they get set to punt, a whistle precedes the kick. They're backed up five yards on a false start.
Well, Dustin, Marcus Tuiasisopo, the Rice offensive coordinator in his first year, was pretty vague in what he said the plan was with the quarterbacks, where his yeah. words were, we just want to put them in the best position to win. And they have uh, certainly shown a great insistence in trying to use the strength of their offensive line. But Arkansas has been ready for the moment on those big third downs as a nice kick goes out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Offense is stuck between gears at the moment, a four point game. By Dari Noka, Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and a new addition to our team, Ben Watson. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down. 10.30 Eastern on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Tara Talmadge reporting from the field. Dustin Fox, Mike Cousins with you. As we near the midway point of the second quarter. And K.J. Jefferson takes off to the sideline. His 34-yard touchdown run is the lone touchdown in the game. And Rice with a second quarter field goal. And they navigated to their three points. backfield let's see how rice handles it defensively it's a slant and it's dropped and dustin that's a couple off the hands of burks the top target for jefferson that's surprising that's the second drop of the game and that's an easy pitch and catch for the slant for first down watch 16 right near in the slot i think he hit him in a bad spot right in the hands He's kept his streak alive with a catch already today. He's caught a pass in all 21 games of his career. Rice swarms and smothers Burks. That Baker was all over this one. Coaches were raving about Baker. He, he doesn't start on this defense, but he plays a ton at the Will linebacker spot. And of course, now with uh, Chamberlain out for the game we assume uh, guys like Baker are gonna get a lot more a lot more reps excuse me Kenneth Orgy had a punt block for Rice that helped set up a short field for the Owls this takes a drift and then Owls roll down to the 41 yard line there have assuredly been more punts than expected by Arkansas in the first half. And this sets up the Owls very well again. Dustin, you were critical of their quarterback swapping in and out. Looks like we're going to see McCaffrey here to start this drive. Yeah, I just think you, you want one guy. That's going to be green that's going to come out here, Mike, and, and get this drive. And, of course, the last drive on third and five, you, you bring in McCaffrey and take green out of the game. I mean, listen, I'm not the coach for, for, for Rice, but I know football, and I know that as a quarterback, you want to develop that chemistry with your guys and, and that continuity, and you can't do that by coming in and out of the game, especially against an SEC opponent. Hard tackles. Catalan comes up from the safety spot. He was the first SEC freshman last year since Eric Berry in 2007 with at least 86 tackles and three interceptions, a team captain. He was a Thorpe Award finalist, or semi-finalist, I should say, a season ago. Had a heck of a year. He's on all the, all the watch lists this, going into this season. I like this. I like this Catalan guy. He's a good player. The drops have been perpetuated on both sides. First target for Jack Bradley today. And that goes by the wayside. Catalan's got big hands. 10 and a quarter inch hands. They measure from thumb to pinky at the combine. And obviously for a receiver, that's, that's a big deal. You see Odell Beckham Jr.'s got the 10 inch hands. Hopkins from the, the Cardinals with 10.1. I remember what mine were at the combine. Not I'm 10. guessing you didn't make the list. <laughs> I didn't make the list, no. 
Third down and three for Green. He swings it. Jake Bailey with his first catch of the day takes it inside the 20. Rice fans have been wondering where their top receiver was. He gets the catch and the penalty yardage at the end of the play. Defense number one, late hit on the bat. That penalty will be a force half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. Mike, this play was all set up by Bradley Rosner. Number two on the outside, the wide receiver gets a block. Almost, I think he blocks two guys. He's going to come into your screen from the right side. Good block right there that springs Bailey for the big first down. He takes out two guys. Terrific job by Rosner. So their second leading receiver from last year gets them first and goal. They tried to go wildcat earlier with Kalen Griffin, got called for a penalty, and Griffin goes toward the sideline. Bumper Poole says, no, sir. Talk about a linebacker playing sideline to sideline and just seeing ball and getting ball. That's number 10 right here. Sees it, believes it, goes low, gets him on the ground. It's a great job by Bumper Poole. Team's second leading tackler in 2020, he and Grant Morgan both surpassed the 100 tackle mark. If you're joining us late, Morgan is out for the remainder of the game, called for a targeting penalty in the first quarter. Green back to throw. He backpedals and throws a fastball low, bouncing shoelace level for Jake Bailey. Let's see what they I'm do here. Last to time there, Dustin. Yeah. Will they go for the end zone? Are they going to run the run the football again down here? They got to they got to take a shot to the end zone. Green's going to stay in the game. Last time they had third and manageable, they brought McCaffrey in. I'm telling you, look for Jake Bailey. They haven't had many targets to number 11 at all. He's in the slot right here in the middle of your screen. Green whips it incomplete. There is a flag at the end of the play. The coverage from Ladarius Bishop. And that could perpetuate more offense for Rice with the result of the flag. Man coverage, he drives on it, and he's a little early, but that's that's pretty good coverage. That's a close call. I, I don't know that I agree with the pass interference call there in that situation. But nonetheless, it sets up Rice with a huge opportunity here at the goal line. I wouldn't be surprised to. They get big, a toss back, and it comes down to the one-yard line. Ari Broussard at six foot 215 gets his first carry of the day. And Trey Williams, helmet comes off on the play. He'll have to leave the field for at least one snap. I love this little toss play out to the outside here. Cuts it back, cuts it inside. And Broussard's a good story. I mean, he was a former walk-on. Got a scholarship back in the spring of 19. This is just power football time, Mike. Rice gets big on the offensive line. Handoff for Myers, who plunges into the end zone. Touchdown, Rice, and the Owls take the lead in Fayetteville. Gotta love an offense that has a fullback. And Jerry Johnson, number 32, is a great lead blocker for this Rice offense. 
helps spring Myers for the touchdown right there. A quick drive for Rice, just 221 off the clock. They only had to go 41 yards and looking for a stunning upset. They lead by three. For a three touchdown underdog coming to an SEC opponent, they've got the lead 10-7. Late in the second quarter. Jordan Myers' touchdown run puts Rice in the lead, has the sideline hyped up. He has done everything in the course of his Rice career. Touchdown. He's a tight end, wide receiver, running back, wildcat quarterback. And he makes it a three-point lead as we near the midway point of this game. Arkansas down by three as they come in, favored for the first time since October of last year, but Dustin, to this point, the offense outside of a 34-yard touchdown run from K.J. Jefferson, I think the best word has really just been stagnant. They, they really have been. They have not been able to get much going on offense. You know, Jefferson's 4 of 10 for 21 yards. That's not going to get it done. And when you've got Burks, who's your star wide receiver, ha having two drops, that's, that's not good as well got to find some consistency here and they could kill themselves with penalties especially on special teams on the receiving team 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down we'll talk about field position rice has owned the field position in this game it's laid out in this stark disparity average drive starting field position for rice at the 50 for Arkansas, their own 18-yard line to go along with eight penalties for 66 yards against the Razorbacks. That last touchdown put this home crowd into a little bit of a stunned silence. Beautiful tackle from Trey Schumann to make that run about nothing. You'd be remiss to not talk about the Rice defense and how they played. I mean, this is a defense that was stout a season ago, and they're coming in here to an SEC opponent, not scared at all, not backing down from anybody. Jefferson with the handoff, the offensive line, with a good push on the backside as well, helped get them maybe an extra one or two yards there. Like really, not, neither team has taken many shots down the field. If I, if I was Arkansas, I, I'd be taking a couple of shots, maybe not in third and three, but I'd be taking some shots down the field with your uh, athletes on the outside. I mean, obviously, they've got some playmakers, including Traylon Burks. Fans won it offsides. I think Elijah Garcia there in the middle was, was a little too happy there. Play clock hit zero. And it looks like Sam Pittman wanted some extra time. They may have just been trying to draw rights off sides, but you cost yourself a timeout with three minutes to go in the first half. Dustin, whether this score is 10-7 Rice, 10-all, 14-10 Arkansas at the half, what do you think Rice is going to feel going into the locker room? Their sideline's electric right now. They, they look like they're into this game. They believe that they can win this football game. And no matter what happens, if right, Arkansas, you're right, they can, they can make it a 14-10 game at halftime. Rice is still going to feel really good about how this game has started for them. They played really well on both Offense and defense, and their special teams has come through in a big way as well. Couple of runs on the drive. Jefferson, four of 10 for 21 yards. And an interception this afternoon. And another mistake cost them there. The snap just squirted away. And they had to fall on it. And it's fourth down again, deep in their own territory. Well, Arkansas is just sloppy to start this game. This is trying to, it's just a low snap, I think. I, I don't think it was true. They were trying to snap it to, to Burks. 
I think Jefferson was supposed to catch the snap and then hand it off to Burks, but Burks gets in the way of the low snap. They're lucky to fall on the ball. Gosh, it has been quite a messy couple of opening quarters for the Razorbacks. Rice has got a good field position, an opportunity to add more points before halftime. This is a stunner so far, Mike. And Dustin, this presents here a perfect opportunity if you're going to do it, which Rice really hasn't in the first half, a time to take a shot downfield. Yep, absolutely agree with that. Riley Green has gotten more of the snaps here in the first half. He's gone 5 of 11 for 50 yards through the air. Kalen Griffin gets two. I bet you one thing, Coach. Mike Bloomgren does not want to give the football back to Arkansas before halftime. So he'll take all of this time down. Bloomgren, the experienced fourth-year head coach who spent time in the NFL and then seven years as an assistant and offensive coordinator at Stanford under David Shaw. They take the play clock down to eight, and the ground gives way under Griffin. So he goes nowhere, although it didn't appear there was a lot of room to run with anyway. I'd consider calling timeout if I'm Arkansas here. You have a chance to get the football back if you stop him here on third down. A little surprised they're not going to use the timeout. could be to their benefit and we'll see just how aggressive Rice is feeling here whether it's another handoff content to most likely take a three-point lead into the locker room or an attempt to try and move the sticks and keep this drive alive they run a couple of big fellows in front to lead the way for Jordan Myers who takes a good look and a stare down from bumper pool at the end of the play May have been a flag in the National Football League for staring over top of a player. But Bumper Pool just runs right down the line here. And as, as uh, the running back Jordan Meyer spins, he takes a huge lick from Bumper Pool. There's the stare down. Lucky he didn't get a flag on that one. He's a good player, though. Fun to watch. Love those linebackers that play with one speed, and that's with their hair on fire. That's Bumper Pool. I think the grass in the helmet also adds a little extra flair, too, for Poole. <laughs> Gotta love that. Status quo, not a terrible outcome for Rice. As they're just 45 seconds away from taking a lead into the half against an SEC squad on the road. For the Arkansas offense, this first half has only yielded more questions than answers. Out of pocket, it's Alyssa Lang and Andrea Carter. They take you inside the world of SEC sports. Interviews, lots of laughs, and Alyssa's signature passion for finding the best food the SEC has to offer. The show comes to way every Wednesday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's Jefferson who flings to the sideline. No intention of a complete pass there. The drives so far today for Arkansas have gone punt, touchdown, two more punts, interception, and a pair of punts. I can't imagine the locker room is going to be too much fun here at halftime, Mike. Which Pittman can't be thrilled with this offensive performance. Uh, Coach Pittman is usually quite mellow, but 
There's going to have to be an injection of energy and life into the Razorbacks for a second half comeback in the season opener. Because as Arkansas fans know, the schedule does not get any more forgiving after week one. And the smattering of boos from the Razorback faithful. So Jefferson with an underwhelming first half as he went 4 of 11 for 21 yards and an interception. And the Razorbacks with high hopes here in 2021 find themselves down at the half 10 to 7. The look says it all for the head coach, Tara. Coach, not the way you wanted to start this game off. How do you feel, though, heading into halftime right now? I think we're pretty lucky to be down three when our offense gets a penalty every drive. We throw picks. We can't snap the ball on time. And then on special teams, we get a penalty every time we got a plump ball. And we're down three. We probably need to regroup and get, get a lot better here at halftime. You did have that nice touchdown run from K.J. Jefferson, though. How do you feel about his performance? Well, obviously, he hadn't played well. I mean, threw a pick. We can't snap the ball on time. He's got to get better, too. There's another 10 over there. He's got to get better as well. All right, Coach, thank you. Pretty simple explanation. That's your halftime speech in a nutshell. Well, maybe the family-friendly version of it anyway. 10-7, Rice over Arkansas at the break in Fayetteville. New York Mets fans' impressions booing their own team going into the locker room at halftime. So, Wiley Green, 5 of 11. Luke McCaffrey, 1 for 3. And it's green to break the huddle, but that doesn't mean necessarily he's on for the entire drive because we've seen McCaffrey come in for just a single snap at certain points. And they brought McCaffrey in in, in like weird situations, a third and five, you know, a third and goal. I mean, it's the inconsistency at the quarterback position to me would be concerning if I was one of those players. On first and 10, a clean pocket. Throw across the middle, in on the tackle, it's Hayden Henry who returns, suspended for the first half after being tar or as sent out last year against Alabama for targeting. No John Ridgway today, as Arkansas fans well know, recovering from his appendectomy. And Grant Morgan was sent to the locker room by the officials for a targeting call in the first quarter. His suspension lasts throughout the game. He can return next week. Play action. Now, tight end usage has been pretty heavy, all things considered. Jager Bull has his second catch today. They like that play call. You set it up with the run. Play action pass, of course. Bull gets out the backside. Nice, easy pitch and catch for the first down. gain on first down rice trying to contribute and so far they've done a good job on what has been some eyebrow raising scores around college football today at holy cross knocking off uconn and fcs victory over an fbs team tulane sending a scare across norman oklahoma and beyond no. with a game really coming down to the wire and so there's no state <laughs> Mike, if that game were played in New Orleans, you wonder how that game may have been different. Obviously, they had to change the venue because of Hurricane Ida. But a heck of a performance by Tulane. I think you and many others will wonder what the answer to that question might be for quite a long time. Rice is just going to try to lull you to sleep. Just run, run, run. They're going to huddle up every snap, take their time. They would be happy <laughs> to win this game 10-7 <laughs> if they could. They're just going to grind away that clock.
Jordan Myers, who's got the Rice touchdown on the ground in the backfield with Wiley Green on third down. Razorbacks bring four, a deep shot for the first time today, and it's thrown too long for August Pete. Fourth down, Rice will punt. We were wondering when the moment would come, and that's the first heave from Green. Yeah, I like the, the uh, shot, taking a chance down the field to, to the big target. 6'2", 181, August Pete goes, but just a little bit too much mustard on that one. But again, you have a chance to flip the field here with your punt team. Greg Brooks waiting. And the average starting field position today has been less than stellar for Arkansas. That takes a turn out of bounds. The official marking still going. I think that's the first break that, uh, that Arkansas has had all day. Going to get excellent field position here for Jefferson. That was only a 17-yard punt. I love watching the official run up the sideline. You remember how that yodeling, <laughs> that yodeling yes. game on the Price is Right where the yodeler climbs to the top of the mountain until he falls off? That's, that's what it's like yeah. watching that. <laughs> how do they really know where that thing goes out? They just guess. They just run until they're like, ah, I think it went out about here. Well, it's good when nobody on either sideline can overrule you. So whatever you no. say goes. It's like being a parent. I think it was here. Okay, let's line the football up and <laughs> put it at the 44. Hey, look at that average starting field position, their own 17-yard uh, line. Makes for a long day. Can't imagine what Coach Sam Pittman said in the locker room to these guys because you saw the frustration in his voice and his eyes uh, with his interview with Tara at halftime. Not a happy camper. Mostly disappointed with the penalties, which have come in all phases. A sloppy snap near the end of the first half as well. And a modest gain for Traylon Smith on the first down handoff. That throws zip to the perimeter. A shoelace tackle slipped, but the reserves came on to stop Traylon Burks from going any further. Third down and about five. Yeah, the, the Rice defense, everybody just flying around. I mean, the missed tackle right there, but there's another guy to come in and make the uh, tackle right behind you. And as quickly as Arkansas tried yeah. to get back to the line of scrimmage, Rice looked a little bit panicked, but they covered up quickly. It's still two yards to go to try and get that first down. And they're, they're going to go for it on fourth down, Mike. I like this call. They go for the sneak. Is the extra push going to be enough? Rice says no. I think they're short, Mike. If Jefferson could have just kind of got out a little bit more to the right, I think he would have picked up the first down. But instead, I think they're going to be about a half a yard short. The initial spot did not look great. No. And the officials are going to wave everybody back as they get an accurate marking. Just gets stuffed. It was uh, Traylon Smith who was trying to push him for the extra yardage. We're short, way short. So a turnover on downs for Arkansas. You praise the move there, Dustin. The yep. aggression you certainly understand after an underwhelming first half, but now they give it right back to Rice. I like the move and I like the call. I mean, a quarterback sneaks a very efficient play at all levels and, and they just can't execute it here. Jefferson's a big guy. You know, he goes six foot three, 245. Just all he has to do is almost fall forward for two yards. But give credit to the Rice Owls. That defensive front bowed up. So Arkansas can't take advantage of the great field position. 
after what was a disastrous 17-yard punt. Rice gets the ball back. It's a first down throw that yields another first down. And they move downfield, August Pete. A redshirt sophomore, valedictorian of his high school class. You imagine you find a good number of those at this yeah. school in Houston. Good job by him. Run after the catch. Catch the football, get upfield. That's what you're taught as a wide receiver. The extra effort here to get the first down. Pick up a 15, moves them to the Arkansas 41-yard line. Trying to build on a three-point advantage. Green fakes the give. He loads up, throws deep down the middle of the field. It's a wide open August Pete for a Rice Owls touchdown. He's matched up on the outside with Ladarius Bishop. And not quite sure if the play fake fooled everybody, but he was wide open. Riccatelli comes on the extra point. And he makes it a 10-point Rice lead. August Pete and Wiley Green connect for a big strike. It's a double move on the outside. Wide open. As a three touchdown dog, they're up 10 on Arkansas. In the 2020 season where Rice only played five games, went two and three, August Pete had one catch. It was a three yard touchdown grab. He got hurt in that opening game and missed the remainder of the season. Today, he is just connected on a 41 yard touchdown catch on the pass from Wiley Green and given Rice a lot more hope here in the second half of pulling off this upset against Arkansas out of the SEC. Back-to-back -back drives here are going to start with good field position after the return from Ladarius Bishop. But it was a case of mano a mano and August Pete leaving Ladarius Bishop in the dust, Dustin. Yeah, you wonder how he got so wide open. 24s in man coverage right here. And he's going to stare in the backfield. It's going to be a little out and up move by August Pete. As it goes, watch him stare in the backfield and right there, you're beat. And it's a beautiful throw, touch pass to a wide open receiver for a touchdown. Ladarius Bishop is a really talented corner, but he's got to do a better job staring at his man and not staring in the backfield. Deep shot try from Jefferson along the sideline. Oh, a beautiful connection. Tyson Morris had to grab it with one hand, and he does exactly that for a huge game. This is the kind of effort you got to have. You want to get back in this ball game if you're Arkansas. Out of the 26, all sorts of time. This dart into the lap of Devion Warren. And they're going at ultra hyper speed right now with this tempo. Rice's defensive line didn't even get set there. Oh. Smith, no game. Let's go back and watch this catch. The effort by Tyson Morris just goes up, fights off the defender, hauls it in. Great concentration. One hand against the body. Great effort. And now you feel a little juicier on this offensive drive for Arkansas. The fans are getting back into the game. The volume in this building had been turned down a couple scores ago from Rice. Nice burst again from Smith with Arkansas trying to slice into this 10-point deficit. And that's going to be right at the sticks. He needs to get to the six-yard line to make it a first down. It's a heck of a cut by Smith. Everything is plugged up in the middle. He just kind of sticks that foot in the ground and bounces out to get the first down, first and goal. 
This is the first time all day, Mike, to me, this offense has, has clicked on all cylinders. It's been a lot of stumbling to start. An early jump from the left side of the Rice defensive line on first and goal. Burks, the top option for Jefferson at the bottom of your screen. Looking for him, Jefferson takes off, he leaps, and he is there! K.J. Jefferson, for the second time today, runs for an Arkansas touchdown. Excellent decision by Jefferson to take off and run with this football. There was nobody open, and he sees the lane, just like he did on his first touchdown drive, sees that lane, takes it, and delivers great effort to get into the end zone. How about a catch with one hand to kind of get the crowd back into the game? Tyson Morris goes up and grabs this from Jefferson, says, give me that. Yep, that's my ball. And then Jefferson says, I'll do it on my own. Takes it to the house. And Arkansas, no surprise, right back in the ball game, down 17-14. Whatever that was on that last drive, the Razorbacks got to try and bottle the surge of offense to get down the field quickly, get their second touchdown of the day, and pull to within three of their former conference opponent, the Rice Owls, who have one of the more surprising leads of the day in weekend number one of a full slate of college football games. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Tara Talmadge, glad to have you along. And game number one of the year for these two teams on a pretty sweltering day where the crowd has gotten back into it, Tara. Yeah, guys, after that Rice touchdown, this place got a little quiet, but that touchdown by KJ Jefferson definitely brought it back to life. I'm telling you, it's pretty hot out here, to be honest, but I heard that there were over 70,000 tickets distributed for this game. I don't know if there's 70,000 in the stands, but there is a great crowd and they are loud and they're playing a big factor in this game and getting the team hyped up. Definitely are. The sideline needs to get the energy back up too. And I think that drive will do the trick for the Razorbacks. So look who's in the game. McCaffrey back in the game. Now he's come in with a sense of urgency. He hands off for Jordan Myers, who goes backwards there. Looked like half the Arkansas defense was in on that tackle, including Deshaun Stewart. It, it, it is surprising, though, Mike, that they come back to McCaffrey after Green throws the beautiful touchdown throw. I like to think, Dustin, that I'm a logical person. I can follow patterns, understand what's going on. And I'm at a loss for explanation at the moment, yeah. where the most successful being, drive not, of the day. I'm not being overly critical of the coaching staff here, because they know what they're doing, but like, Green throws a beautiful pass for a touchdown. And McCaffrey follows up with another beautiful <laughs> pass. It's on his never mind. again. Just keep throwing the ball to number 88. Yeah, I would say so. All right, well, the coaches, I guess, know what they're doing. <laughs> this beautiful throw by McCaffrey on the outside to, to Pete. Matched up with Greg Brooks, the nickel. And that ball's dropped right in the breadbasket. Perfect throw, perfect catch. That'll silence the crowd a little bit. They march into Arkansas territory. Short throws have composed most of the offense this afternoon for Rice. And they want to answer right back here after an Arkansas touchdown. I don't know about you, Mike, but uh, I'd be looking where, like, where's 88 on every play? He's come out of nowhere to make some terrific catches in this ball game. The formations have been multitudinous from Rice. And out of the eye with a play fake. It's a catch and a lost helmet as well. Jalen Catalan helps make the tackle. So Bailey has to come out for a play. Helmet pops off. 
Bailey, the wide receiver, former teammates with DJ Uwe Ungalale at St. John Bosco High School in Southern California. And we'll see Uwe Ungalale tonight, 7.30 Eastern, Clemson and Georgia from Charlotte. About six minutes to go, third quarter, Rice by three on the move. Ari Broussard has been one of three running backs, along with Jordan Myers and Kalen Griffin, to see action in the backfield. Action pass right there from, from McCaffrey. I mean, it's, it's working. And despite being bigger on paper, especially along the lines, there has not been an overwhelming amount of pressure for either Green or McCaffrey at quarterback. Straight drop back on second down and six. He eyes the sideline and toss toward Pete again, but he goes out of bounds as the ball gets jarred loose. Third down, six. I think Pete's a little mad at himself. He thinks he should have had that catch, and it was a well-thrown football, but good coverage by uh, Monteric Brown. So Pete comes off the field on third down and six with Rice looking to knock off an SEC team for the first time since they did it in 1980 against LSU. McCaffrey thought about the swing pass. His advantage is his speed, and he carries the defense with him all the way down to the 18-yard line. Looks like they were trying to set up a screen at the top of the screen to the other side. He just comes out the back end of this play and like I think he got the first down that's close I'd go for this you know that everybody on the road everybody was looking to the sidelines oh they're gonna go for it and it's green here on fourth and one quarterback sneak instead they load up and hand it off it's a race to the sticks and Myers comes up short What a great stand defensively for Arkansas right there. They were ready for that play, and there was five red, red jerseys taking Myers out of bounds just short of the line to gain. This is just great team defense by the Razorbacks. Look, everyone stays in and get him out of bounds just short. Big stop for the Hawks. Arkansas forces a turnover on downs as Rice went for it on fourth and one. Bumper pool, even in the absence today of Grant Morgan, who was ejected for targeting in the first half, has helped lead this defense. They're down by three, scored a touchdown on their last drive, and they come back here, fewer than five minutes to go in the third quarter, with the opportunity to retake the lead. Throwing on first down, Pick up about 10 on that slant pass to Traylon Burks. So it officially goes down on the completion to Burks as a gain of nine on the first down throw. From the pistol, keeper for Jefferson who lowers the helmet and just plows right through the defense. An impressive run as he's had a litany of those this afternoon, Dustin. <laughs> Six foot three, 245 at the end of this run. Look at this. It's a true read option. You can see how long he keeps it, keeps it in the mesh point and lowers the boom. Big day for him. He's got both of their touchdowns. Becoming the first Arkansas quarterback to run for two touchdowns in a game since Tyler Wilson did it against Ole Miss. Back in October of 2011. Jefferson, 8 of 15 through the year today. Hands it off. This is the freshman Rocket Sanders. Just his second carry today.
Further emphasis on the run. Slips through a couple of arm tackles. And Sanders keeps the Razorbacks moving into Rice territory. Game, he does a lot for this defense. He plays on the edge. Here's a look at the run. Great cut there by Rocket Sanders. Nothing up the middle. Has great vision and instincts to get that first down. Blitz comes from Rice. Jefferson throws right into it. The tight end, Blake Kern, a former walk-on, makes the grab. And the Razorbacks keep on marching. Kind of like the play action, giving Jefferson some easier targets. Maybe builds his confidence a little bit. Yeah, he started off slow. Four for his first 11 for just 21 yards. Now nine of 16 for 72 yards. He looks a lot more comfortable here in the second half, Mike. There's no doubt. Sanders finds space through the middle. It's been big play after big play on this drive for Arkansas. And for Jefferson, they told us, going back to the spring, with him at quarterback, again, it's only the third start of his college career, but that when they had open practices and scrimmages in the spring and invited fans to attend those, Sam Pittman and Kendall Bryles felt like the bigger the occasion, the more pressure there was, the more eyes there were on him, the better that he played. Steady dose of Rocket Sanders on this drive. Having some success. I like the way they're mixing up their run pass options. Through the middle on second down, Elijah Garcia. The longest active start streak on this team. The junior stops him, so it'll be third down and long here for Arkansas. In field goal range, down by three. Well, the goal for Mike Bloomgren was to, to make this a four-quarter game. Just have it be a game in the fourth quarter. And needless to say, they've done that. Jaqueline Crawford danced his way into the backfield. All that just for the handoff up the middle. Smith gets away, tries to turn up field. Antonio Montero pushes him back, and it's fourth down. A lot of window dressing for a minimal gain, right? Thought for a second he was going to bounce out of those tackles, but terrific pursuit by the Rice Owls. And Arkansas has the opportunity to tie the game here with a short field goal try. Kick on its way, and it is pure, and things are even at 17 in Fayetteville as Cam Little is good on the field goal opportunity. Thirty four yard kick and putting the ball on the ground was a formula for success on that drive Dustin. It was but I'll, I'll say this much for Rice that's a win So hold them there to just a, a field goal attempt. That's that's big. It was a nice drive by Jefferson in the offense. They were balanced in their attack And Rice was looking gassed. They, they obviously lost their defensive end Kenneth Orgy to, to some cramps there on that drive and to still bow up and get off the field is pretty impressive. And really for Arkansas, you're kind of lucky to have this game tied, right? I mean, you, you shot yourself in the foot nearly every possession uh, of the first half. And now you have a chance to win a football game. Tie ball game.
It'll be very interesting to hear after the game what the thought process was like for Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator for Arkansas, on that drive as well, because Sam Pittman joked about it with us, but there was a, a hint of truth to it about when they get into their, you know, running at session of practice where they really want to have run plays. A lot of those ended yeah. up turning into pass plays anyway, but they went heavy <laughs> to it there, and we'll see how much that factors into their offense going into the fourth quarter. Well, we know what Rice is going to do. They're going to try to be methodical again with their offensive possessions. Go back to green for this drive. It's, it, it is funny to me. I mean, like the last drive, McCaffrey has a couple nice throws. And then they just switch it up and go back to Wiley Green. So really no consistency with who's going to take a, each uh, series. Well, I thought either you were going to say exactly that verbatim or just keep throwing the ball to August P. One of the two. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll look, to, look, to, look to 88 if you're going to throw the football. That's a wise decision, historically speaking, and today as well. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Exactly as everyone predicted. Rice 17, Arkansas 17. Who's got the most for 15 more minutes on a sweltering day in Northwest Arkansas? The return of college football, full fan bases in attendance, and it's coming down to the wire. It's Rice in Arkansas, even at 17, as we go to the fourth quarter from Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And Rice with Wiley Green at quarterback. August Peak got mixed up with Ladarius Bishop on the outside. And so it's a question of who's got a little bit more in the tank on a very hot day. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Tara Talmadge, glad to have you with us here on an early afternoon kickoff for game number one of the year. Let's drop a flag. Or no, he just accidentally dropped the flag and picked it up. I wonder what the... Well, there's something that just happened because they just marked it a first down. There was a penalty. Unfortunately, the ref's mic has not been functioning for yeah. most of the afternoon. And so, despite best odd. attempts at lip reading, it does set up Rice now all the way out to the 32-yard line after that call. And Dustin, if they can continue to pick up chunks of yardage like that on the ground, it's going to be perhaps some variety of sport drink will be available on the sideline to get so, players with, with, with some electrolytes in it. There you go. Yeah, maybe some Brondo. What a run by Over Broussard. Shoulder. Yeah, Broussard comes in. There's a very late flag from the back side of that play as well. Already some free yardage for Rice on this drive. Arkansas has got to hope it's not a little bit more. I think there might have been a face mask at the end. Or a hold. Holding on the offense, number 55. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. We will replay second down. Well, the penalties have been heavily tilted against Arkansas today. You can see at a margin of four to one yardage wise so the owls are backed up from the 31 pocket quickly collapses off the edges the ball is tipped and intercepted arkansas has got it here comes catalan inside the 20 cuts back at the 10 he bounces off a couple of tacklers goes sideways as the flag comes down but catalan has the interception and arkansas has got some juice early in the fourth quarter mike that's the play of the game so far for arkansas on defense what a terrific job by catalan on the return i mean the ball's floating up in the air it's it's tipped 
and Catalan just, he looks like a running back going down the sidelines. Got to think this was some sort of a call on the return. But what a play. When Arkansas needed a play, their star safety makes it happen. During the return, personal foul, illegal block below the waist against the passing team number five. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. Ball tipped in the air, Catalan right there, Johnny on the spot, and then he knows what to do with it down the field. I wouldn't jump like that, <laughs> but that's a good job on that return, and they hit the quarterback, Wiley Green, with the, uh, the low blow. Right there at the end, he's trying to take out a defender or in this case, a blocker on the return. And it all started with Mark Kellotzi along the defensive line, the former Missouri Tiger, one of the few transfers they brought in to shore up the front. Catalan, what a huge day for the team captain. And it sets up Arkansas with first and goal as they've got the opportunity to take the lead. Ball Smith start. in the backfield, trying to take the handoff, and they're going back. It's Myron Cunningham, the left tackle. On the offense, number 76. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains first down. And coach Pittman's going to have a field day trying to coach up these penalties for the next game. Be a long day of logging film when the staff comes in to the facility tomorrow. Smith remains the back with Jefferson. The tight end Henry over to the right side of the formation. Again on first and goal, maybe a couple there for Smith. Josh Piercy, who's in there for the injured Kenneth Orgy, does a good job staying at home and coming down the line of scrimmage and making that stop. There's number 12. Got to keep an eye on number 16 as well, where Traylon Burks is in the slot. Yes, you do. He's been quiet today. Two touchdowns for Arkansas, both rushing scores for the quarterback, K.J. Jefferson. How about another quarterback run here? Instead, he looks to throw, and it sails high. He tried to hit Warren. Warren wanted a flag. I think so, so did most of the Razorback fans here in Fayetteville. Pretty good coverage there on the outside. It's Jordan Dunbar. Coaches were raving about this kid, just a freshman. Said he's probably the most improved player in all of camp. And the Owls have another stop. The blitz comes, the throw to the end zone, the pass incomplete. That's a flag. It's got to be a flag, no? It's a lot of contact there as Jefferson went for another end zone slam. On the defense, number 24. The foul occurred in the end zone, so the ball will be placed at the two-yard line, and it carries an automatic first down. A lot of contact here on the outside. You'll see it right. He hooks him with the left arm, turns the body. That's the easy indicator for the pass interference on McCord. Look right here, turns the body, can't get to the football. Definitely pass interference. Now first to goal. Smith into the end zone, Arkansas touchdown. The Razorbacks have a fourth quarter lead.
or watch the first half. If things are a lot different here in the second half, all Razorbacks, as they take the lead back with a great run, powerful run by Traylon Smith, and the Hogs are on top 24 17. Arkansas hoping to have a one in the win column when this afternoon is over. And they've got a touchdown advantage over Rice, which is going to get the ball back here fourth quarter. SEC football final is back. Darinoka, Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, Ben Watson. They'll take you to the biggest stories of the day, break all the games down for you tonight after FAU and Florida, 10.30 Eastern SEC Network and the ESPN app. Penalty making a huge difference there at the end of that drive. After flags had plagued the Razorbacks, especially in the first half, and they got a fresh set of downs, able to put it into the end zone, and put the pressure on Rice here, the heavy underdog today coming on the road. And to try and guess who will be playing quarterback here might be a fool's errand because it's been back and forth <laughs> between Wiley Green and Luke McCaffrey. I'm not sure who's had the better game. I mean, they both have had their moments where they've made some plays. I think McCaffrey gives you the better chance with the ability to run, but Green's made some plays too. It looks like McCaffrey's gonna get the call, at least on this first snap. McCaffrey, the freshman native of Colorado, played last year at Nebraska in seven games and then spent his spring at Louisville, but a deep-seated connection between the McCaffrey family dating back to Christian McCaffrey's college career and the Rice head coach Mike Bloomgren. Mike, there's a face mask here too. McCaffrey's trip to play for Rice with a penalty there on first down. Yeah, sorry to cut you off. There's a big-time face mask on the outside, Mike. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense number 71. A 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. More penalties for the Razorbacks. Lee Hedrick has a little flair to the end of his penalty call as well, where it, and it carries an automatic first down. <laughs> Dramatic. 11 Arkansas penalties for 101 yards. There have been some significant and well-timed for Rice, at least, 15-yard penalties today against the Hawks. If you're wondering why this game is so close, I mean, they're spotting them 100 yards. And a block punt. First design run that we've seen for McCaffrey, and it does not go well for the Owls. Mike Bloomgren, along with his offensive coordinator, Marcus Tuiasosopo, who played at Washington in the late 90s, second round pick to the Raiders, and played with Oakland and the Jets and has spent most of his coaching career out on the West Coast, Washington, UCLA, USC, and Cal. And lines up here. Looking to help his team get across midfield. McCaffrey's helmet is off, so for the first time today, we can confidently say who's going to be a quarterback for the next yeah. <laughs> 27, Hayden Henry comes up from his linebacker spot at the end of this run and just delivers a big-time shot to McCaffrey right there. That did not look comfortable. With the crowd behind the Razorbacks, Wiley Green floats it to the outside, and he's intercepted. It's taken away by Ladarius Bishop. Rather, but Tarek Brown with the pick for Arkansas. Nevertheless, a huge surge of momentum. 
flag is down. 11-13 in the fourth. Take a look at Monteric Brown to the right side of your screen. Just plays this foot. This is a long throw. Trying to get it out to 88 Austin Pete. Or August Pete, I should say, excuse me. That's just a bad throw, bad read by Green. I mean, there's really not a lot of pressure. Just lets that thing sail on him in a great play by Brown. Leather meeting paint with the ball spotted right at midfield. The Razorbacks here can make it a two-score game. Start to instill some confidence in those assembled at Razorback Stadium. Rice shows blitz and they bring it here on first down and it gets there. They drive Jefferson back. He never even had a chance to step up in the pocket. It's Piercy again getting in there for the sack. They bring Bring six, they can't block it, and a great job by the Rice defense to get that stop on first down. And talk about a momentum shift after that interception. That was exactly what the doctor ordered. Brings up a second and 18. They want to throw here. A dangerous one goes off the fingertips of Devion Warren. And now third and 18. Warren's wide open here. This throw was a little bit high, but it hits both of his hands. Look at the easy slant, playing soft zone coverage behind it. It's just a drop by Warren. Between Devion Warren and Traylon Burks today, there have been more drops than perhaps KJ Jefferson would have anticipated. No doubt. Both teams have underwhelmed on third down. Jefferson's got time. He throws a wobbler. That is short of what they needed. They had to get to the 40. It's Keytron Jackson who comes up about a yard short. Probably going to go for this again. No, they're not. They're going to punt it. I'm surprised. Jefferson kind of sits down right near the sticks but just about a two yards short. And Dustin, that wasn't a great spot. He landed at about the 41, and the ball spotted at the 42. He spotted it back. He spotted a back yard. <laughs> Sean Fresh faked out everybody on that pump and turn. <laughs> Including myself. I'll get it around <laughs> the five-yard line. So a long field for Rice as they trail by a touchdown in the fourth. Announced attendance today, 64,065 at Razorback Stadium. With 9.42 to go, fourth quarter. Arkansas hoping to open things up 1-0 and, oh, and a seven-point lead over the Rice Owls. Reunion of old Southwest Conference teams, their first meeting since 1991. Rice's last win in the series came in 1990. An eight-point win in Little Rock. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, Tara Talmadge reporting from the field. Wiley Green and the Owls have certainly had hope throughout the course of this game, and they do have some more here. But 95 yards stands between them and an equalizing score. All Rice wanted to do was have this be a one-score game in the fourth quarter. They've got it there. Now they've got to put together a drive. And they need it most. Surprised they went back to green after the interception, Mike? There has been so much <laughs> turnover at quarterback today. I don't think there's anything decision-wise that will be surprising at this point, Tara. You know, I was talking about Busta Brown. I know everyone calls him Monteric, but a lot of the guys on the roster call him Busta. Maybe it's because of the plays that he busts up right there. He didn't. Only, he only had one pick last season, but he did have 
six PBUs for the Razorbacks that led the team. So good for him to get that start this season and uh, break up, bust up that play. <laughs> bust up, I like that. They've got some good corners here at Arkansas between uh, Bishop and Brown. And they're going to be put to work here on third down and four with an empty backfield. A four-man rush, zip across the middle. Jake Bailey with the catch, completion, flag as well. Personal foul targeting on the defense number 10. That play is wow. under review. Okay, so bump, bumper that's the second tackle. targeting. That's the second targeting penalty against an Arkansas linebacker today. Grant Morgan has been disqualified from the game. That happened in the first half. So he will come back next week. If Bumper Poole has this call upheld for targeting, he will miss the first half, Dustin, of next week's game. Yeah, and he's gone because that's targeting. I mean, that, that crowd of the helmets down, that receiver coming over the middle is defenseless. Watch right here. Right. Yeah, I mean, he uses his helmet like a spear. And it's right in front of the one official who's got a great bird's eye view on it. See, right there, the head goes down. I think that's the right call. You have the indicators of targeting there where he lowers his helmet and leads with it. And that's what the officials are going to be looking for here to try and make this call. It will certainly be to the disappointment of Barry Odom and this defense if it does yeah. come back confirmed for the call on the field because that would mean two of the starting linebackers are out. After review, the ruling on the field of targeting on number def defense number 10 is confirmed. Number 10 of the defense has been disqualified. Fourteen tackles on the day, and unfortunately for uh, for Arkansas, and they, they play Texas next week, and he's going to have to miss the first half. Yeah, guys, I was talking with Barry Odom, the Arkansas defensive coordinator, about this same topic ahead of this game, and he mentioned how it is so difficult for his guys mm. or just honestly defenders in general with this new targeting rule and a lot of the time the target zone is so low that it's actually causing injuries to defenders now as well there's no doubt i mean i play defense tara and I, this is back in the early 2000s before the targeting rule existed i i don't know that i could play in this game it, it, you have to go low and then of course you mentioned the the, the lower leg injuries acls and mcls and all those ankle sprains and breaks and all that stuff. I mean, you have to go low, otherwise they're going to call you for targeting and you're out of the game. It's, it's a very difficult situation to be a defender in 2021. It's a second and nine for Rice here inside seven and a half minutes to go as they're looking to score and perhaps have a game tying drive. A forward stumble nets a few yards for Wiley Green. And so Grant Morgan has been ejected. His day is done. He'll return for the first defensive snap next week. Bumper Poole's going to miss the first half. And that's on top of Hayden Henry having to miss the first half after being suspended for, for targeting last year against Alabama. So it has really bitten Arkansas bad today with those penalties where the way that that is adjudicated sometimes we look at the letter of the law and i think the, the argument never ends over it and it's probably going to fester along this week as well for arkansas fans up by seven with seven to play right back to action after torian carter was the defender slow to get up for arkansas Perhaps the most pivotal snap of the afternoon to this point for Rice, trailing by a touchdown. They've got a third and eight.
And there's a jump along the right side of the offensive line. Ball start on the offense, number 70. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. Javon Wolford makes it third and 13. Be your right tackle, number 70, yep. Not going to make it any easier. Third and 13. It's the longest tenured player on the field, backs his team up. Ball comes loose, and the best thing that Green can do is just fall on top of it and wave a flag of surrender on fourth down now. I love the call to blitz on third and 13. Put the pressure on Green to make a throw. The nice twist inside. That's Isaiah Nichols, 93, who gets in there. Really well-designed play by Barry Oden. And you're right, Green, all he can do is just get on the football. So now they're going to have to put it on the heels of their defense again. Where is he going to spot it, Mike? It's anybody's guess, Justin. Stop. 31 and a half. All right. Like the old yodeler. <laughs> the Arkansas offense, come on down. It's been a big afternoon for K.J. Jefferson with a couple of rushing scores today. The first Arkansas quarterback to rush for two since Tyler Wilson back in 2011. Rice found success with August Pete going deep and targeting calls have hurt the linebacking core, but that's a versatile group, Dustin. It is, and listen, Barry Odom told us they cross-train all their linebackers, so they all play every position, they know every position. So when a situation like this occurs with Morgan out and Bumper pull out, guys like Hayden Henry, Andrew Parker, they can jump in there, no problem. Bit of an option look as Jefferson had Smith to his side. He's taking off, nearly collides with Smith, still has space. Does he have a third touchdown in him? K.J. Jefferson all the way for the touchdown to maybe put this one away. During the run, holding on the offense number two, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Fans are not going to like that, and, and I'll tell you what, that's, uh, <laughs> that stinks for Jefferson because that was a heck of a run by Jefferson. They're going to get the hold right there on Jackson. And it's, it's the right call, but it's a spot foul, so they'll go 10 back from there. They'll have it about the 45. What a great effort by Jefferson, though. He looks like he, and you're right, Mike, you said he's got a third gear. I think he had a fifth gear. This is a drive. Look, he's, he's got to catch his breath here coming back to take this snap. But this is a drive where they come out onto the field thinking, okay, we'd like a touchdown, but really if we can just wind the clock down and make Rice's defense suffer for the end of this game, that's an optimal outcome because we're already up by seven. He takes off and says, forget about it. Let's put this in the books with one play. Antonio Montero, the linebacker, was the one slow to get up. So number one on defense gives number one on offense some time to catch his breath. A 68-yard touchdown run that got called back because of a holding penalty. It's Rocket Sanders in the backfield for Arkansas, and they are content to let every moment trickle off that clock. Smart. All the way down to four. And a pass, it's trailing Burks down the sideline. When the defense is thinking run, they get the opposite. There's a late flag on the hit at the edge. Yeah. 
And got 15 After the play and then over, some. Personal foul on the defense number 33. Late hit out of bounds. That 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run, resulting in half the distance. Automatic first down. I like the play call here, Mike, because everyone thinks you're just going to run the football. They fake the handoff and they get Burks coming across the formation. Let's see a late hit. That was the late hit. Wow. Mike, <laughs> that's surprising, isn't it? In, in the way that college football is adjudicated these days, can't say no. But I certainly understand where you're coming from, a defender's perspective, where the contact was really negligible. Jefferson rolls, throws end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. Well, as they say, ball don't lie, right? Jefferson had the touchdown, comes back. The great throw to Burks. And this one was too easy. And that should just about do it for the Arkansas Razorbacks. What looked like a scare for a while, they turned it on here in the second half. It was a very disappointed Sam Pittman going into the locker room at halftime. And assuredly, the list of grievances for the head coach will be long today. But you can take them a little bit easier, at least, when you come away victorious, as the Razorbacks are on the doorstep of doing. I, I will tell you what, I really like Jefferson on the move, throwing the football. He seems to be really accurate once he gets outside the pocket. That was a nice throw to Morris. Really a tale of two halves for Jefferson. He, he played so much better here in the second half. Really kind of settled down, got more comfortable with his reads. Burks made some plays, stopped the drops. So for his second career start, I, I would say it's it's a little up and down, but what do you expect? I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't have the experience. Just played one game last year against Missouri. He'll grow into the position for that size, that ability, and that speed. I mean, that is... That... Kendall Bryles has, has a special talent at quarterback. He can do a lot, of, a lot of things well. Just needs to get the experience, I think. Certainly a lot to work with, and you clean up the drops from today as well, which number at least three from the wide receiving core. And there's a lot of upward mobility that's going to be possible for this team. Our lineup continues all day in the SEC, taking you into the night with a schedule capped off by ETSU and Vanderbilt. Every game is also available for you on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Dustin, let's go letter grade for you. Arkansas today overall. Uh, I would probably give them a C plus. I was ready to say the exact same. Now C plus is not going to win you games in the, in, the, in the Southeastern Conference, but against a, a Conference USA team, you can get away with that a little bit, I think. That's just out of bounds, Cedric Patterson. So second and ten for Wiley Green and company for a Rice squad that, all things considered, has to come away with reason to be optimistic as well. Oh, they played well in this game. They just, you know, they're, the Razorbacks are just a little bit too big and a little too fast. I mean, in the second half, they just kind of warm out a little bit. Everything went Rice's way in the first half. Exactly. Exactly. Green's on target for Bailey, whose name we did not call perhaps as much as expected today for their top target. No, he's an electric player for this offense, but he just hasn't really got the targets. Oh. So Pete gets an escort to the opposite sideline. And Mike Bloomgren, Bloomgren gets a little bit of time to think here. 
before this next snap. Dustin, did you think the quarterback rotation served Rice well today? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I, if I was one of those quarterbacks, I'd want to win that job. And, and, and hopefully for Coach Bloomgren at some point, he can narrow it down to one guy because it just, there was no flow to their offense, Mike. I, I never got the sense that this team had any consistency with their offensive if, uh, flow, I guess. I mean, it, it just, it was very, very uh, rocky today. Arkansas brings four, another incompletion on second down and 10. And, and Mike Bloomgren, Marcus Tuiasasopo, they were very vague in their explanation as to what exactly their plan for this quarterback rotation was yeah. going to be. They said, well, we'll put them in where we feel like they have the best chances for success. But to switch it out in the middle of a series, there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. And, and like you said, I don't know that it serves the offense well to have two guys swapping in and out. What did you think? You, th you think the offense had any flow today? Or no? No. No. Yeah. Green gets hit as he throws on the run. And it's Jordan Myers. That's a first down as they're a few yards shy of midfield. Inside three and a half to play until the end of regulation. False start. False start on the offense, number 58. That's a five yard penalty. It remains first half. Mike Bloomgren cited you know, Steve Spurrier's two quarterback rotation in the late 90s as an, as an example of it working. But you have to really probably count on one hand the number of times where it's worked really well, especially to try and do it this way. And we pressed him on that a little bit and said, can you think of any others where it's really worked well? And there wasn't a lot of substance to that. I understand the thinking, but I think also you got to try and stick with one guy and see what works. Good pressure by Arkansas. Wyland Green has got nowhere to go with the football. Just a four-man rush, but they keep hitting the offensive line with these twists and stunts. Doing a great job with the pressure. Across the middle, and it's yet another interception for Jalen Catalan. A huge day for the safety. There is a flag. But he's feeling good as he runs along the back of the end zone. Holding on the offense, number 54. That penalty is declined, first down. And it's run out the clock time for the Razorbacks. Got to think he felt the pressure, because that, that was nowhere near a, uh, his target. And Catalan nearly takes this one to the house, steps out at about the... What is that, the 20-yard line? Well, hard to say that you could do better than he did in his freshman yeah. season, leading all FBS freshmen. And the first SEC freshman since Eric Berry's Tennessee <clears throat> season of 2007 with at least 86 tackles and three picks. And already a couple in game number one. Help lead his team to a 1-0 start in 2021. And that's all the more important with a huge game looming next week on ESPN against Texas. It's ironic that Arkansas plays Texas next week, and then in two weeks, Bryce plays Texas. They'll be watching a lot of this film. And Rice appears to be content to just let this thing run out. 
Dominique Johnson is the back here for Arkansas. And he takes the pitch. Goes down to the 10. By the way, one of the Catalan had himself games. today, didn't he? He did. I was going to say, Dustin, one of the more interesting games of his first week certainly is Georgia Clemson tonight. Perhaps the biggest goal anybody can have is just avoid injury here in the last right. 146 with the game decided. MVPs on either side, number one, offense, defense for Arkansas? Uh, I would say offense. you got to give it to Jefferson. Uh, the way he played in the second half was so much better and, and, and poised, confident. There's Pittman giving him a little advice before he finishes this game out. And then Catalan, you got the split screen. There's our MVPs right there. Both wearing number one. Arkansas is going to let this clock whittle away. It was the first matchup in this series since 1991, in a series that dates all the way back to 1919 in Houston. Two teams that were in the Southwest Conference for 76 years. And the last game they played in the conference, Arkansas did, was against Rice. But they might tack on some more here. Johnson goes out of bounds as they're on their way to winning 17 of the last 19 in this series against Rice since Gerald Ford assumed the office of president. Arkansas could just take a knee. You think they want to put another one on the board? You bet. That would be impactful for some. Yes, sir. First up the middle, the survival of the first wave. Dominique Johnson, touchdown Arkansas with less than a minute to go. So it turned out to be a slow start for Arkansas. Turns out to be a pretty convincing victory here in the second half. Was certainly a scare at the break. But down the stretch, this is what you'd expect. The talent, the size, the physicality of an SEC team to win out. No doubt. I mean, they're bigger, stronger, faster. You see it. They wore out Rice in the second half. This is, this is more of the Arkansas team you would expect to see as we go throughout the rest of the season. So, Tara, inevitably, the conversation is going to turn after a couple of days of, hey, the penalties were bad, to now Texas is on deck. And what has the conversation been around Fayetteville about this big game in week two? You know, everyone is really excited about that matchup with the Texas Longhorns. Of course, you know, the old Southwest Conference and bringing that team here to Fayetteville. I imagine that Razorback Stadium is going to be jam-packed fans. It's I'm time mapped up and there's a lot of hype around it for sure. Sam Pittman, he addressed that right off the bat when we talked earlier this week because the number of times he's been asked about the schedule has just been infinite this year. And he said, we're not playing the schedule. We can only play who's in front of us in a given week. You can't right. worry about that. As a coach, you have so many things to worry about. Is everybody going to class? Is everybody healthy? Yeah. Everybody eligible? Who's in the transfer portal? Who's got a new uh, name, image, and likeness deal that I've got to hear about this week? All of those right. things. And when you wrap this one up, and you'll look ahead to Texas. As the approach came, the ball found its way off the tee. It, too, perhaps has cramped up. <laughs>
the officials blew that dead a little bit early. Yeah. They didn't even give I it a chance say, for Sean, a return. Sean, Sean Fresh was trying to return it. I don't know that four or five yards deep he was going to take it out, but but he didn't have the chance. Dead. No chance. Well, return of the Mac greets Luke McCaffrey. <laughs> as he is on for the final series for Rice of the afternoon. Had a lot of time, threw into a couple of defenders and over the head of Jake Bailey. Mike Bloomgren said though, is he got McCaffrey to come to play for Rice, that those two have known each other, Bloomgren thought, since Luke was nine years old, with the relationship going back with the McCaffrey family. Mm -hmm. Where Ed was, after his playing career, the coach for a short time at Valor Christian outside of Denver, and now is the head coach for the University of Northern Colorado. And I don't know how in that family you compete for best athlete. <laughs> yeah, that name is, uh, is iconic. So many great athletes in that family. And their mom, Lisa, was a standout soccer player at Stanford as well. Her dad was an Olympic sprinter. She and Ed met at Stanford. So the, the genes come from both sides. One more snap, Mike, and that'll do it. Well, impactful final touchdown for Arkansas. As they'll be winners by 21 over Rice. 1-0. Heading into a matchup with Texas next week. And Rice will hop out of the gates 0-1. As next week they will be home for a game against Houston. And then they'll take on Texas in week three. McCaffrey for one more try. And his pass is caught. Triple zeros on the clock. The Razorbacks survive an early scare and defeat the Rice Owls 38-17. Well, the, the fans were a little nervous for a half. And then things just really turned around here in the second half. Arkansas just, just too big, too fast, too strong. Curious to see how they play the rest of the season because they, they've got a, a quarterback in, in KJ Jefferson who I think could, could be special with all that ability. Just needs to, to get the game experience and there's no, no telling how, how good this guy could be.